Psalms, chapter 138, a psalm of David. Okay, important that this title is ascribed to David. I will praise thee with my whole heart. No half-heartedness about it. Well, David committed it. You know what? It was a contrite heart that God loved in David, that God forgave him and gave him a more sure blessing than you could find in the Old Testament. Heart, motive, attitude is what God sees. And that is when you need to really, when you're judging people, you can judge David and call him whatever you want, what Joab did. But God knows David's heart. Do you realize in the, in the millennium, David's coming back and he's going to sit just under Jesus Christ? He doesn't say anything about Solomon. You know, funny, we, we speak about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, but we're going to see the second coming of David. We're going to see the fourth coming of Elijah. I mean, Elijah showed up. Elijah showed up with Jesus. Elijah's showing up in the, in the uh, tribulation. He's going to show up in the millennium. We're going to see the third coming of Moses. He showed up in Egypt. He showed up with Jesus. He's going to show up in the millennium. David's going to show up in the millennium. Christ is going to sit on his throne, and David's going to be under him. I guess he really did love the Lord with his whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. Now, you got to remember where David was in his entire life. He spent a lot of time in the Philistine area. He spent a lot of time in Moab area. He spent a lot of time in areas where they served gods. Can I stress that? God. You notice how that sounds like an, a snake? God. Gee, I wonder where, where did that come from? And when God said, I mean, when David is amongst the gods of the, of the nations and the people, you know what he did? He sang praise unto God. He didn't back down. And it's funny because I'm listening to a tape in the car right now and it's people who have questions to their Catholic priests and it was one of the things that I really didn't know as a Catholic is they don't do the fee fi fo fum and they don't say the Lord's Prayer I think it was the other one before heathen I mean Protestants or, uh, I hate to say stuff like that but and because we don't want to offend anybody is, was the answer David didn't care. David sang to the Lord even in the midst of the enemy of God. No matter where David went, he gave praise to God. And he was with a lot of heathen. There was one point he was a soldier of Philistine. And he was going to fight against Israel. And God stopped that. Now I guarantee when he's amongst those Philistines, they're over there praising their gods. And he's over there, and I got the joy, joy, joy down deep. Philistines didn't have that. David did. Oh yeah, by the way, that song is down deep in my heart. I will worship toward thy holy temple. That's kind of weird because the temple wasn't built yet. So what do you get when people put emphasis on a building when he says temple and it hasn't even been built? It's not built until Solomon builds it. And when Solomon builds it, David's in Abraham's bosom. So even it's not even the Old Testament. It's not the, the stones and the gold and the cedars and all that. And praise thy name for thy loving kindness. What's what's a loving kindness? You know how many times David could have been dead in his life. 
Man, he had Saul chasing him up and down. There's one part in the in the Bible. They're on this mountain. You're, he'll be going around the mountain when he comes. He'll be going around the mountain when he comes. And, and it wasn't for God that they, they were caught each other. He's in a cave one time, and, and Saul comes in there either take a nap or something else, a private thing, and David cuts off his skirt. It's a loving kindness that David made it to the throne. And even when he did make it to the throne, oh boy, there was absurdity of, of you know of children and all kinds of problems and Bathsheba and and yet the lovely kindness of David by God reaches out that David believed God what God said and David knows that one time he's coming back he's going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ as the Messiah. Now that's loving kindness. You know what loving kindness is to, to us? Oh yeah, we're in pain today. We're suffering. We gotta work. We're under the curse. But the loving kindness is, will be forever with the Lord Jesus Christ, where He says, "And for Thy truth." Well, I think Jesus said, uh, "I am the way, the life, and the truth." And for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. Uh, we love him because he first loved us. Uh, what what, what about with the friend if he lay down his life? For thou, God, has magnified thy word above all thy name. You know the Jews will not write out God's name in fear. But I bet you they'll write out Bible. You want to show that to somebody who, who, who changes the Bible, addition, subtraction, footnote it, that God holds the word of God above thy name? You mean Jehovah? You mean Jesus? Jehovah says that the word is more important than God's name, and John 1.1 1, 1 says the word, and John uh, sec, first John says that the word is Jesus Christ, so you mean Jesus Christ is above thy name, Jehovah? Show that to a Jehovah witness and see him flip him off walking down the driveway. Not only is Jesus Christ God, but Jesus Christ is above Jehovah. That's what it says. You know, God made everything beautiful on this planet until we cursed it. Wait till you see a rose in a millennium. Off the curse. There's only one thing that does not the curse does not remove off in a millennium, that's the snakes. <clears throat> You're gonna have a, a a a bear and a cow sleeping together. And they're not gonna and one's not gonna eye the other as a dinner. lost my train of thought derailed God's word oh I know what it's saying Jesus said heaven and earth shall pass away everything you see is going to pass away but one thing there's two things that are not going to go away the word and the souls of men that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and how do men believe on the Lord Jesus Christ Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by movies. I don't think so. Faith cometh by hearing, and let's have a little children party and a, and, and a bouncy and all that. And, no, that's not what it says. Faith cometh by hearing, let's have a rock and roll play. And, no, it's not what it said. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by what? The words. So you better realize when you read a modern Bible that removes the name of God and Jesus in many places, you got a problem. You got a problem. You know, if you went into a city hall, the hall of records that they have, the vault, and you go in there and start erasing names off the documents and, and dates and 
and changing the these and the thous and all they have you arrested. But it's okay to do it in the Bible and have a have a Christian bookstore sell it all that junk. That's okay. In the day when I cried, thou answerest me. And strengthens me with strength in my soul, that, that eternal part of every man. Keep going, David. Don't give up, David. I told you you're going to be king, but Lord, I, I'm down here in this cave and all. I don't care. I told you you were going to be king. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, wake up. Wake up, Jesus. We're going to sing. Didn't I tell you we were going to get to the other side? When? Be still. No, God said it. God told David, you're going to be king. You were anointed to, uh, to be king by Samuel. Lord, I'm in trouble. I know you're in trouble. Like the disciples, when they got in the boat, Jesus said, let's go off to the other side. Jesus told them, we're going to the other side. <clears throat> they didn't believe it. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee. Well, you see, we're a biblical nation. Did you know that? Stop your laughing. Stop your laughing. It doesn't say all the presidents of the earth shall praise thee. <laughs> you know, we haven't had one revival in this country since we've had a president. We read about those great revivals in the Bible. I'm not talking about the other junk. I'm talking about the true revival where people got saved, the camp meeting, and the, and the, the tent meeting, and the, the, the fire that came from the Lord that lit people's souls. They're going to be in New Jerusalem. You know, we haven't had any of those since we had a president. Now, I don't know. But I have read reports and I have seen maps and I've heard this from true men I believe of preachers in the Bible. That our nation, Washington, D.C., is laid out with most, with, uh, I can't think of it, the Masonic symbols. Now, I read half of George Washington's, that you can find in the public library, his diaries. And I didn't really see him as a church goer. I'm sorry. On Sundays, he'd rather record how many wheat came in and how many uh, uh, puppies his dog had. I read the books. I didn't finish them, but I read enough. He would read in there, I forget what you say, Martha or his wife would go off to church. Or they would have the preacher come and, and had dine with them. I read them. In America, we changed ourselves. We didn't want no king to reign over us. We're going to have a president. So where do you find president in the Bible? That's under Babylonian authorship. Daniel was one of the three presidents. That was Babylon. You know what God says? God says king. But what do you call him? A, a, a president or a king? All the kings of the earth shall praise thee. You mean Richard Nixon's going to praise the Lord? John F. Kennedy's going to praise the Lord? George Washington's going to praise the Lord? Barack is going to praise the Lord. Hillary Clinton is president. I mean, I, I mean, her husband was going to praise the Lord. Yeah. Now you think I just stuck my foot in my mouth, didn't you? The same presidents are going to praise the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ. The unsaved presidents are going to bow the knee and proclaim that Jesus is Lord at the great white throne judgment. Now see how I got out of that mud? 
I'm not saying George Washington. I'm not saying any of the presidents were lost. I'm not saying they were saved. I don't know. But they will praise the Lord. I believe Nebuchadnezzar of the Bible is going to praise the Lord as, I don't know if you would say a saved man, but I, I, he, he acknowledged God, and, and that's it. You don't read anything more about him. His son Belsizer will probably be at the great white throne judgment. Cyrus will probably be one of the ones that goes into the, 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 newer, the new heavens as a Gentile. Name and obey the Lord. God will get honor. Queen Victoria waited for the Lord Jesus Christ and would, would say, if he were to come, I will get off my throne and give him my crown. Do you want to see any pope do that? You know what the popes are going to do when Jesus comes? They're going to gather an army. You do believe me, right? You do know that the Antichrist is going to sit on the Pope's seat and rule the world. And that when when the, the devil's released, he's got an army, and God just flattens him out with fire, but still gets an army. Stop picking on my religion. Well, you stop sending people to hell with your stupid religion, and I'll leave you alone. I know a couple of dear people I'm praying for, and your religion's got them tied up into hell. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And if your religion doesn't believe that's Jesus, leave my religion alone. If that, your religion does not believe that is Jesus, I believe that is Jesus. I believe Jesus is God, and God is Jesus. When they hear the words of thy mouth, I believe, and I'm unsure, but ever since Ronald Reagan, I've written every new president and sent them a gospel track. And whether they read it or an aide reads it, I will praise thee with my whole heart. The Lord knows my heart. And who knows what the Lord has done. The Lord says something about his word he'll accomplish. What he was. Maybe it got right to the president. I don't know. Let the Lord do. Yay! That's where all the trouble began in Genesis 3. Yay! Yay, 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 yay. They, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord. But says, All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. Yea, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord. And for, for great is the glory of the Lord. I don't understand that. <laughs> all the kings. All means saved or lost. Got it? It don't say the Jewish kings. It don't say the righteous kings. It don't say the saved kings. It says A-L-L. -L, and that's not just laundry detergent. See, I can, use, I can put a grape stain on that laundry detergent, and it's not going to get all the stains out. <laughs> but that says all. That means all the kings. Of the earth shall praise thee. Okay, O Lord. I understand that. Whether they're saved or they're lost. At the great white throne judgment, if the books are open and they are found righteous before God, they will go into either new heavens or new earth. I understand that. They'll praise God. If the books are open and they are lost, they will go off into glory, into the lake of fire. And they will praise the Lord. I understand that all of them when they hear the words of thy mouth well done thou good and faithful servant hey amen lord thank you depart from me into everlasting fire made for the devil's aid your lord your righteous amen i understand that 
Yea, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord. Uh, you mean the lost ones? What are the lost ones are going to sing about? What does Revelation 1 say about the Christian? It says, We shall be priests and kings. Right? Maybe that's a millennial passage. I can see all the kings in the millennium that are under Jesus Christ and receive Christ as their Savior who served the Lord and earned that right to the inheritance and to uh, reign with Christ. The Bible says those who have done faithfully to the Lord are going to have their time. They're actually going to reign with Christ. How long? Who knows? But I guarantee you, the Lord Jesus Christ calls me from wherever he sends me to. And says, come up, this is your moment. This is your, what is it, five minutes of glory, one minute of glory, something like that. You come up in here and sit with me on my throne and reign all the earth. I guarantee I will be singing praises to the Lord Jesus Christ. To me, that's the only place. I don't I don't know about a lost king singing to Jesus. I can see him, you know, the Bible says, every knee shall bow, but singing? I can see that as us as priests and kings singing. Well, anyway, all, I mean, lays right there. I've got a, a note here for the, where is it? All the kings are going to know Psalm 102, 15 and verse 22. I'm, all the kings. Yea, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Yeah, amen. He's glory. Great. He saved my soul. He did everything that I could not and did it in love and took the beating that I should have been beaten with. And not only beat it, and not only whipped, and not only thorns put on my head, not only nailing pain into my into me and sticking a spear in my side, casting me off all eternity to be tormented. That's what I deserve. That is why he is great and full of glory. Though the Lord be high, he is high. Yet has he re has he respect unto the lowly okay let's stop there for a minute let's stop there cool one. we're still talking about the kings of verse 4 we're still talking about that most powerful God of all power now, I could be wrong uh, if this is what David's intent is but verse 4 I see that as Born again Christians who have earned the inheritance of serving the Lord Jesus Christ in the millennium. I don't know what's going to happen to a to a loser. Now, to me, a loser is someone who gets saved and doesn't do what the Bible tells them to do. You're a loser because you're not going to get crowns. That's why I say it. You're not going to get a right to reign. I have no idea what happens to you in the millennium when you don't choose to serve the Lord. Because if you don't serve the Lord, you're not going to get that reign. And the Bible says, if you deny the Lord Jesus Christ, you got your peanut butter sand. And your buddy says, Aren't you don't you go to church? You go to church. Are you a Christian? Well, yeah, I go to church, but I'm not as fanatic as the other Christian. You just denied the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you think he's gonna give you a city to reign? You took your talents and hid it in the ground. Yeah, I'm a Christian. Here's a gospel track. I took a talent to, to carry a track in my pocket to hand it to somebody. And when I go to church, I reload. I'm going to be buying some tracks this week for the Halloween and for the fall. I'm lowly. What the heck is New London, Connecticut? What is that? What is some some baby that was born two months before its due date spent its its uh, first three or four months in the incubator? 
that caught uh, several flus that could have died. During a blizzard, you know, a hard time getting that little baby to a hospital to, to be uh, saved. Growing up with smoking and drinking and, and, and drugs. And defying my teachers and defying others. And, and what is, who is that? I wasn't rich. Spent my money on foolish stuff. In April 24th, 1987, the finger of God, the word of God came into my life and I knelt down and asked that holy, wonderful, glorious, great God to say, save me. And all of heaven stopped, opened up the book of life, and wrote my name down there. And the angels rejoiced, the Bible says. And God says, I got a mission for you to do. Lord, what do you want, Lord? I want you to go tell others. And from the first day that I went, the next day I went to church, that Sunday, I went home and started telling people about Jesus Christ like the Bible told me to, to do. Not knowing the Bible told me to do it. And I'm reading the Bible, and I'm studying the Bible like the Bible told me. I didn't know what the Bible was. I stole my first Bible, and my first Bible was a good news Bible because I opened up and had good little pictures in it. And when I stole that Bible, I was a security guard. Ha, oh, whoa, look at that. At a, at a, at a Roman Catholic church uh, school system for, for boys who were in trouble with the law. How do you like that one? Didn't the Lord play a joke in the world with me? How'd you like me to tell that? I, I just really I forget that in my testimony. I was a security guard, stole my Bible at a Roman Catholic school for boys. I didn't like that. Deep River, Connecticut. Who am I? Some people probably use that against me. I don't care. But I was lowly. I did what the Lord told me to do even before I knew the Lord told me to do it. And I'm studying my Bible one day and I said, crown, crown, I want those things me. And as I go through it, I learned that I'm going to earn a crown for what I do for the Lord. I'm like, why? Why do I deserve a crown? Even before I was told by the Lord to do, in his word to do, I was already doing. I'm not. And then he's going to give me a right to reign the millennium if I'm faithful? But the proud he knoweth afar off. You never, find, you never find pride with God. And what that verse means is if you're a proud, look at me, I got saved. Look at our big church. Look at who we are. God says, get over there. How far off, listen to me. If we're talking about the millennium, we're talking about Christians. I'm applying it to Christians. This may not be what David meant, but I'm applying it to you, Mr. Christian or Mrs. Christian. If you are proud, how far off will God put you? Maybe you won't be on the earth in the millennium. How about that one? Now, maybe I'm stretching it. I'll put that out there. This is my own thought, and I don't have no scripture to prove it. I'm looking at it, and this could be, listen, if it's sin and I'm wrong, I ask you to put it in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Cleanse me. Let it fall to the ground. But afar off for those that are proud and prideful. But if you're humble, lowly, God will have respect on you. And it said, all the kings of the earth shall praise thee. Are you going to tell me that all our presidents are, have been lowly? You mean corporation owners, uh, sports owners, uh, business where, you know, if they go against you, they put you in an airplane and you die. Uh, you mean uh, you, your dress and DNA things and... I don't know. 
have you read about the history and studied the history? And I haven't. Just, just tip of the iceberg of the kings of England. One guy would slew how many wives just to marry the next wife. You read about King Herod? He, he married his brother's wife. And John the Baptist lost his head. Wait a minute. You going to tell me Herod's going to be... Uh, I'm, I'm going to apply this to the Christian. And I can be wrong. I'll admit I can be wrong and the Lord rebuke me. But doesn't it sound like it? Now where were we? Oh, far off. Though I walk in the midst of trouble... Now, how many of you out there know that David walked in trouble? David had two dogs, trouble and woe with me. And they stayed by his side his entire life. Can you tell me a time when trouble was not with David? Was there ever a time that David was without trouble? He goes out, son, yes, dad. When you go to the battle, take your son, take your brother some clothes, some food, and all that for the troops and all that. Okay, Dad. David, yes, brother. What are you doing over here, little pipsky? You, you, you left the, the stupid sheep to come over here and the see the what? I didn't. Dad told me to come. King, I can defeat this this giant in the name of the Lord. <laughs> yeah, right. You're a little pipsky. Get out of here. I can do it. I went against, and all right, here, here's, here's my armor. And he's in trouble in the armor. Here's this little boy, he, little man, young man. And a adult, I mean, you know what the Bible says about Saul? He was taller than all the other Jews. So here, he's inside. I guarantee if he would have got in Saul's <clears throat> armor like he did, I guarantee he could do a 360 around in it. He ain't going to fit, king. He's in the army of the Philistines. The king loves him. All right, it's time to go to battle. We're not taking him. He's going to turn to defeat us and kill all of us, king. And king goes to David. David, they don't want us to go to fight your own people. Why? What did I do? David was ready to be loyal to a king to kill his own people. God says, I got to stop that. So what happens? He sends a military orders into Ziglag to grab all his men's wives and all his goods. He's got to go fight them. David gets on the throne. What happens? Go we'll take a little walk one day. Woohoo! Go get me her. All right. He's on the throne. He's king. What happened? Uh, David, you just had you just had a rape in the in the uh, in the in the castle. Who got raped? Your daughter did. Who is it? Your son. Oh. David, we got to leave town. Uh, uh, Absalom is going to assert the authority. Let's go. I mean, when did that guy not have trouble? And what does the Bible say about a Christian? Let's, let's read this again. Though I walk in the midst of trouble. Yay. 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 Didn't I see yay? Verse 5. All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. That's why I'm applying this to a Christian. Doctrine, it's David's. I'm spiritualizing it for us. Yea, all they that live godly. And there's a yea in verse 5. I don't think I'm, I could be, but I don't think I'm lying in justice. I didn't know there was all this in this dungeon. All right, where was I? Though the Lord be high. No, no. Though I walk in the midst of trouble. Do you want to walk in trouble? Do you really want to get in trouble? I can t I can write a book how to get in trouble. Ready? Go down the street and tell someone about Jesus Christ. You'll get in trouble. Tell your family who are Roman Catholics that their religion doesn't work and by the Bible, Jesus Christ, they got the wrong Jesus. You'll get in trouble. I've had family members come to me and stop talking about other family members about and Christians. Go to your friends and all that who are of other religions and tell them about Jesus Christ. Go to other Christians and tell them what they're doing is wrong. And that's trouble.
The Bible says, all, yea, all they that live godly, shall all live godly in Christ Jesus, shall suffer persecution. You'll get trouble from the saved and from the unsaved. Thou will revive me. Return to life. Got to have a revival. Serve God and do right. And when you're beaten down, God said, give you a little CPR of the Holy Spirit and you get back up, get full of the Spirit, and go on and do more. There you go. Man, I some series, uh, I don't want to go. I'm going to go to bed instead. And I get downtown and the Lord revives me somehow, puts on that Holy Spirit air into me, and boom, I, and I come home and I'm praising God. I'm going to church the next day. Hey, guess what? Amen. Glory to God. I didn't want to go that, that night. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand against the wrath of my enemy. Ooh, I hate to be a Christian and be an enemy. How'd you like to be a born again Christian and be an enemy of a Christian? Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand against the wrath of my enemies. You know, there are some Christians who will do anything to try to stop you from doing right. You better believe it. And thy right hand. Who sits at the right hand of God shall. All right. Before I say the next or the last two words in that verse, let me ask you a question. What does Jesus mean? There you go. Look at that. The right hand shall save me. The, right, the one that sits at God's right hand is Jesus. Jesus means Jehovah saved. There you go. There you go. The Lord will perfect ooh, that which concerneth me. That's where I get trials and tribulations in my life. The heat turned up. Like you do with metal, you, you heat it up, you boil up, and you just strip off the scum. Thy mercy. Oh, he does it in mercy. God let all those children die. Oh, God's not that cruel. He's got mercy. It's Satan that doesn't have mercy and is cruel. Satan will have would have you die in fire and then wake up in fire for all eternity. How about that? The Lord endureth forever. Amen. Glory to God. Forsake not the works of thy own hands. And that's not salvation. Because thy right hand saved me. Look at David. He's talking about in the Old Testament. He's talking about God saving you, but you still got works of your hands. Look at that. God will save you, and you still doing some things for him. And don't forsake what you're doing for the Lord. How do you like that? In an Old Testament psalm. All right. Sunday morning. Everyone in church. Put your hymnals down, open up your Bibles to Psalms 138, and let's sing. Why don't we sing the Psalms in the church? That's our hymn book. I'm sorry. Some of those hymns in the hymn books are wrong. I don't care who wrote them. We shall be there for a thousand years. No, there's no time in the millennium. I'm sorry. Shall we gather at the river? Um, sounds kind of like a little baptism there, doesn't it? I will cherish the old rugged cross. Thank God Jesus didn't die in a lecture chair. 
Well, McCall would be wearing that around their neck. You plug it in with a little battery pack and like, see the crew it would be with Jesus on the electric chair and be a little battery pack, blues and red. Some of you guys right now just turned off the tube and cursed me to hell. I mean, I cherish Jesus Christ. The, the, the cross was an instrument. Okay? It's Jesus Christ who I cherish. It is Jesus Christ that saved me, not the cross. It's the cross that he died on. And some of you are now you Baptists out there are totally never mind the Catholics. You Baptists are out there that put me on your hated list, but that's the truth. Why can't we get up and say, I will extol the Lord, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. Well, I won't do that in my family at my family uh, uh, reunion because they serve other gods. I don't want to offend them. I guess I wouldn't say that, would you think? Maybe. Wouldn't say that. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. And if I have an NIV, it probably won't sing like that. Or any other Bible would be changed. In the day when I cry, thou answers me. But my shrink answers first. And strengthened me with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee. O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. Yea, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, yet he has respect unto the lowly. That is me. But the proud, that's him, he knoweth afar off. You know, the two guys praying. I'm glad I'm not like that guy. That's the proud. I was somewhere. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, that will revive me. Thou shalt strength, thou shalt stretch forth thy hand against the wrath of my enemy. And thy right hand, Jesus, shall save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thy own hand. The works of thy own hand. Imagine what God has done with his hand. Imagine all the things that God has reached down and stopped something calamity happening in your life. Imagine all the times that God's hands have stretched down and allowed calamity happen in your I gotta teach that guy a lesson. Now, you know what? I love him. I'm gonna stop that. I'm gonna give him a red light that he's gonna yell at, but I he does not know what prevented me or prevented me from doing to him. And he's yelling at that red light. Oh, if he only knew. He's getting a little prideful. He's getting a little. I'm gonna let that go. Go ahead, let it go, and let let him suffer the consequence. That's the hand of the Lord. I wonder why we don't sing the psalms in the churches. I wonder if there was ever a time in the Bible. You know, it says when Jesus had his last meal with the, with the disciples, and he had the Lord's Supper. It says they sang a hymn. I wonder if it was a song. I don't know. See, you know, the Bible is not copyrighted. When we open up our hymnal, myself, I look at the names and the dates of the people and all that, and I always see copyright. Well, if you really love the Lord, why did you put a copyright on it?
if you want the royalty, I guess. Oh boy, uh, I'll leave like this. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, I'll leave it just like that. Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you, and the word says his returning could happen any day. I'm gonna shout it from the housetops, proclaim it from the mountaintops, tell the world around me Jesus said. Thank you. 